Ancient Ethiopia Greek, Aethiopia, Aethiopia, first appears as a geographical term in classical documents in reference to the Upper Nile region, as well as all certain areas south of the Sahara Desert and south of the Atlantic Ocean. Its earliest mention is in the works of Homer, twice in the Iliad, and three times in the Odyssey. The Greek historian Herodotus specifically uses the appellation to refer to such parts of Africa as were then known within the inhabitable world. In classical antiquity, Africa or ancient Libya referred to what is now known as the Maghreb and south of the Libyan desert and western Sahara, including all the desert land west of the southern Nile River. Geographical knowledge of the continent gradually grew, with the 1st century AD Greek travelogue The Periplus of the Erythrian Sea describing areas along the Red Sea, Erythrian sea. The Greek name Aethiopia from Aethiops, Aethiops, an Ethiopian, is a compound word, derived from the two Greek words, from Itho plus Ops Itho, I burn, plus Ops, face. According to the Perseus Digital Library, the designation properly translates as burnt face in noun form and red-brown in adjectival form. It was used as a vague term for dark-skinned populations since the time of Homer. It was applied to such dark-skinned populations as came within the range of observation of the ancient geographers i.e. primarily in what was then Nubia, and with the expansion of geographical knowledge, successively extended to certain other areas below the Sahara. Before Herodotus Homer c. 8th century BC is the first to mention Ethiopians. Aethiopes Aethiopes he mentions that they are to be found at the east and west extremities of the world, divided by the sea into eastern at the sunrise and western at the sunset. In Rhapsody A of the Iliad, Thetis visits Olympus to meet Zeus, but the meeting is postponed, as Zeus and other gods are absent, visiting the land of the Ethiopians. Hesiod c. 8th century BC speaks of Memnon as the king of Ethiopia. In 515 BC, Silex of Karyanda, on orders from Darius I of the Achaemenid Empire, sailed along the Indus River, Indian Ocean and Red Sea, circumnavigating the Arabian Peninsula. He mentioned, Ethiopians, but his writings on them have not survived. Hecateus of Miletus c. 500 BC is also said to have written a book about Ethiopia, but his writing is now known only through quotations from later authors. He stated that Ethiopia was located to the east of the Nile, as far as the Red Sea and Indian Ocean. He is also quoted as relating a myth that the Skiapods, shade feet, lived there, whose feet were supposedly large enough to serve as shade. Topic in Herodotus. Topic in his histories. C. 440 BC Herodotus presents some of the most ancient and detailed information about Ethiopia. He relates that he personally traveled up the Nile to the border of Egypt as far as Elephantine modern Aswan. In his view, Ethiopia is all of the inhabited land found to the south of Egypt, beginning at Elephantine. He describes a capital at Meroe, adding that the only deities worshipped there were Zeus Amun, and Dionysus Osiris. He relates that in the reign of Pharaoh Samtuk I c. 650 BCE, many Egyptian soldiers deserted their country and settled amidst the Ethiopians. Herodotus tells us that King Cambyses II c. 570 BC of the Achaemenid Empire sent spies to the Ethiopians, who dwelt in that part of Libya Africa which borders upon the southern sea. They found a strong and healthy people. Although Cambyses then campaigned toward their country, by not preparing enough provisions for the long march, his army completely failed and returned quickly. In Book 3, Herodotus defines Ethiopia as the farthest region of Libya, i.e. Africa. Where the south declines towards the setting sun lies the country called Ethiopia, the last inhabited land in that direction. Their gold is obtained in great plenty, huge elephants abound, with wild trees of all sorts, and ebony, and the men are taller, handsomer, and longer lived than anywhere else. Other Greco-Roman historians The Egyptian priest Manetho c. 300 BC listed Kushite 25th dynasty, calling it the Ethiopian dynasty. Moreover, when the Hebrew Bible was translated into Greek, c. 200 BC, the Hebrew appellation 
Kush, Kushite, became in Greek, Ethiopia, Ethiopians, appearing as Ethiopia, Ethiopians. In the English King James Version, Agatharchides provides a relatively detailed description of the gold mining system of Ethiopia. His text was copied almost verbatim by virtually all subsequent ancient writers on the area, including Diodorus Siculus and Photius. With regard to the Ethiopians, Strabo indicates that they looked similar to Indians, remarking, Those who are in Asia, South India, and those who are in Africa, do not differ from each other. Pliny in turn asserts that the place name, Ethiopia, was derived from one, Ethiop, a son of Vulcan, the smith god Hephaestus. He also writes that the Queen of the Ethiopians, bore the title Candake, and avers that the Ethiopians had conquered ancient Syria and the Mediterranean. Following Strabo, the Greco Roman historian Eusebius notes that the Ethiopians had emigrated into the Red Sea area from the Indus Valley and that there were no people in the region by that name prior to their arrival. The 1st century AD Greek travelogue known as the Periplus of the Erythrian Sea first describes the Horn of Africa literal, based on its author's intimate knowledge of the area. The Periplus does not mention any dark-skinned Ethiopians among the area's inhabitants. They only later appear in Ptolemy Geographia, but in a region far south, around the Bantu nucleus of northern Mozambique. According to John Donnelly Faye, these early Greek documents altogether suggest that the original inhabitants of Azania, the Azanians, were of the same ancestral stock as the Afroasiatic-speaking populations to the north of them in the ancient Barbara region along the Red Sea. Subsequently, by the 10th century, these original Azanians had been replaced by early waves of Bantu settlers. <laughs> <laughs> Greek and medieval literature Several notable personalities in Greek and medieval literature were identified as Ethiopian, including several rulers, male and female, Memnon and his brother Amathion, king of Arabia. Cepheus and Cassiopeia, parents of Andromeda, were named as king and queen of Ethiopia. Homer in his description of the Trojan War mentions several other Ethiopians. In some cults of the youngest Olympian god, Dionysus, his maternal origins are believed to be Ethiopia. Ptolemy the geographer and other ancient Greek commentators believed that the Ethiopian Olympus was where the gods lived when they were not in Greece. Topic See also Topic Ethiopian Sea Name of Ethiopia Ethiopian historiography History of Ethiopia Siglwera land White Ethiopians Black people in ancient Roman history References, <references>